The Pittsburgh Steelers are rumored to be interested in Justin Fields. So today, we are going to take this Steelers team and see how well they could do in the future if they had Justin Fields. Now, obviously, that isn't Justin Fields. We still need to get him in a second. But I think this is going to be a really fun one. This could be a very, very successful rebuild. We'll just have to see. So I'm really excited for this one. Get a drink, get a snack, get whatever. And if you enjoy today's video, be sure to leave a like. I know it sounds stupid but it very much helps out the channel i would very much appreciate it and if we can get to just 2,000 likes on this video i may or may not have another steelers centered rebuild planned so if you want to see that again 2,000 likes i have a fun idea and it'll let me know y'all want to see it but be sure to subscribe if you haven't already all i do are madden rebuilds so if you like those you're definitely in the right place trying to hit 50k by the end of the month which i have something very special planned for that too we've been growing insanely quick so yeah be sure Sure to subscribe. And last thing, massive shout out to Exius for the suggestion of this video. I think they were the first one to suggest this. This got suggested like a million times, but I think they were the first one. Their link is in the description. And if you want a shout out, or if you just want to let me know what you want to see next, let me know down in the comments below because that's where I get most of my ideas. But without further ado, let's get into this rebuild and let's get into the off season. And we will finally add Justin Fields to this team. Oh yeah, I guess I should talk a little bit about the team too. I mean, this isn't a perfect roster. It's pretty good, but I'm a little worried about this offensive line. I at least want a new left tackle and a new center. The rest could be fine for the rebuild. We definitely need a new number three receiver. And this defense isn't super young, especially at linebacker. We'll probably need a new one there, at least one. A new safety and probably a couple new corners. I mean, Patrick Peterson playing press man at 33 years old is certainly something. So yeah, we're gonna have some work to do with this team. But now for play Players we have to re-sign. I mean, I'm sure they're gonna bring back a few of these players, but honestly, I wanna make this team younger. Like, this is Mikey McDingle's team now. So I'm not gonna bring anyone here back, I don't think. We'll pick up the fifth year for Najee Harris. That's pretty cheap. And let's work on a trade for Justin Fields. I might have to cheese it a little bit because I don't wanna make an unrealistically big trade. Like, I don't wanna have to overpay too much. We'll just see what we have to do. Okay, I didn't wanna have to do that much, but the Steelers do have a late second round pick obviously I think fields would go for about like an early second round pick so I guess this is fine we're trading a two and a four for fields and a seventh I thought Madden was gonna overvalue the hell out of him and make him worth like two firsts or something but thankfully he isn't so now this is an interesting team and do I want to trade Kenny Pickett already maybe what would he be worth maybe like a third maybe a second I don't know should we trade him back to the Bears no the Bucks didn't resign Baker. I don't know. We'll we'll wait on Kenny Pickett. Let's see who's available in free agency. Okay, there are some players, but nobody's interested in joining the team. We could get Jadavion Clowney, but why? Why would we do that? Should we pay 33-year-old Tyron Smith? I don't think they would do that. I mean, maybe, but I, I don't think that's realistic. Okay, we're gonna go really light for this free agent class. Well, kinda. We're gonna go for Patrick Queen as our main addition, and also Derek Forrest. Just, again, not many players are interested in the team here and we don't have like the most cap in the world we have a good amount but i want to save it for later a lot of the players we also just don't really need here but let's see if these two want to sign Ooh, okay we get we get Derek forrest we don't get patrick queen though okay just in case i'm gonna go very player friendly i just went player friendly it's still not even that much we'll up it to five years 52 and a half mil which that's a really long deal but i'm fine with it okay and he does sign that cool so it doesn't look like much like a 79 and a 75 but they're both only 25 with the star dev. So I'm pretty happy with it. But heading into the draft, we definitely need a corner and a lineman and maybe a receiver. So let's see what we can do. But now here in the draft, I mean, the game's making this easy for us. We have three good corners available, some tackles. Literally all of our needs are the five, six best players here. Let me see who the Steelers are mocked most often in real life. I think we'll go with Nate Wiggins. I could also go Cooper DeGene, but I don't think he's as good of a scheme fit plus of our to used him in a rebuild before. So we'll go with Nate Wiggins. Is he really only 20? Yeah, he is. That's crazy. He'll barely be 21 by the time the season starts. That, that makes me feel old. So yeah, he's going to be the pick here. Let's take him. Hidden dev, 90 speed, 94 excel. Sounds good. And now in the third round, this is kind of tough. We could go with like Bo Limmer, I guess. I think we'll go with Dominic Puny or Puny. I don't know. I've, I have no idea how you pronounce his name. It's one or the other. You know, Dan Moore definitely hasn't been great for them. I think we'll 
we'll play Pooney at left tackle. We could also put him at guard. We'll see. He's like the best lineman available here, so we'll take him. Only normal dev, unfortunately, but good strength. We'll take it. Doesn't really look like him, but it is what it is. And in the fifth round, last pick I'm gonna show, probably the last pick I'm gonna take, let's go with Ricky Pearsall. I'm surprised he's still available in the fifth round, but I mean, players fall all the time, so we'll take him. Another hidden dev, we'll take it. I feel pretty good about that draft, so let's get into the draft recap, and we will see how we did. Okay, this was a pretty good draft. Nate Wiggins is a 75 overall. He'll be our number two corner, and at, again, only 20 years old, he should develop pretty nicely. I don't remember what dev trade I gave him. Maybe I didn't even change it, because I, I just stole this draft class and started, like, changing stuff a little bit, but I guess we'll find out. It's probably just star, but I guess it could be superstar. If it was, he probably would have gotten taken, though, so I don't know. Dominic Puny, 73 overall. He was 24 for some reason. Again, not my not my doing. But yeah, he's better than I expected. He'll be our left tackle, so I'm happy about that. And then we also got Ricky Pearsall, but the CPU picked Dylan Lobb and Jamari Thrash. That's interesting. Another receiver. We don't, I mean, I guess we kind of need more receivers, but I wish the CPU picked a lineman or something, or maybe a D lineman, because we kind of need young depth there. But let's get into year one of this rebuild, and this should be an interesting season with a new quarterback. But here's a look at the team heading into year one. I mean, other than Justin Fields, this isn't too different than the regular Steelers, but you know, that's a pretty big difference. Oh god, he's very much not a scheme fit. That's tough. Or no, oh, are we gonna have to switch to the, the Falcons offensive playbook? That's actually maybe a good thing, because they do have a pretty good offense in this game. I just, I, I forgot they got uh, Arthur Smith as their OC. We'll see how that goes. If this whole thing fails for the Steelers, I think we can point to that. I mean, Arthur Smith isn't bad, he just doesn't know how to use his good players. If he knew how to do that, he would legitimately be one of the best offensive coordinators in the league. He was amazing for the Titans, so I, I don't know what happened with the Falcons. So we'll see how that goes, and the defense is also looking very good. We got a couple dev traits. Keanu Benton went up to Superstar, Mika Fitzpatrick went up to X Factor, which he should maybe have already had, but oh well, at least we have it now. Why did they get dev traits? Uh, preseason week two, we just got Superstar dev. I mean, we'll take it. I don't know why, but we'll take it. But yeah, the team's looking really nice, so let's get to the midseason point of year one, and we'll see how we do in simulation. Okay, we're actually four and three. That's kind of surprising. I thought we would kind of suck. We actually have a really good offense with an 81 overall offense, but our 87 overall defense is ranked number 27 in the league right now for points per game, 28th for yards. Thanks, EA. This is a great game. Nothing wrong with it. Hopefully that uh, fixes itself in the second half of the year. We have some re-signings though, and nobody's interested. I guess Pat Fryermuth is, but Deontay Johnson, not interested. Justin Fields, not interested. Jalen Warren isn't interested. James Daniels is a little bit. Ooh, Cam Hayward's here. That's an interesting decision. I mean, he's 35, and he's definitely regressing a little bit in real life. Okay, we will re-sign Pat Fryermuth first, because he's actually interested. Five years, 71 mil. Doesn't take it. Okay, this is going to be hard. Deontay Johnson, I don't expect him to take this, but five years, 76 mil, that's pretty cheap, and he doesn't take it. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> Justin Fields, six years, 165 mil. That's very cheap. This is still way too cheap. I don't know. We'll try six years, 198 mil, and he takes it. I mean, we kind of cheesed him a little bit, but it's not like we're getting an advantage there. Any other team would sign him to a cheaper deal than that. But James Daniels will offer three years, 33 mil. That's also cheap, and he doesn't take it. God, why does nobody want to be on the Steelers? It seems like the Steelers would be a popular, sought-after landing spot. Okay, well, we'll, we'll figure that out at the end of the year. Let's get to the end of the year, and we will see how we finish. Okay, wow, great start to this rebuild. We finished 12 and five. So hey, maybe Justin Fields and the, the Falcons offense, Arthur Smith is, is the answer, I don't know. We still finished with the 20th overall defense with probably the best defensive roster in the league. So again, thanks EA, that's cool. Let's check out our season stats though. Justin Fields, 3,700 yards, 27 touchdowns, but 18 picks, that's, that's not great. Everything else is pretty good, but the picks are a little high, so hopefully we can get that fixed. Najee Harris, almost 1,500 yards, though, 4.5 per carry, 10 touchdowns. He did very well. Justin Fields didn't get a whole ton of rushing, but almost 500 yards, 4.5 per carry, 5 touchdowns. We'll take it. I honestly kind of expected less. Receiving Deontay Johnson was our leading receiver with 942 yards, 7 touchdowns. Ricky Pearsall, as a rookie, 850 and 7. Pickens, only 750 and 2. That's not great. Oh, and Dominic Puny. Oh, 16 sacks? We only passed 449 times. 
Pistons. This was not a pass-heavy offense. Oh. The rest of the line held up all right. Mason Cole wasn't great, though. But Patrick Queen led the team with 121 tackles. Tackles for loss, 20 for Hayward. He was still really good here. 17 for Highsmith, 13 for Benton, 11 for Watt. And sacks, uh, 10 and a half for Hayward. 10 and a half for Highsmith. That's cool. Only eight for TJ Watt. Huh, not great. <laughs> and interceptions, four for Joey Porter, three for Patrick Queen, two for Nate Wiggins, and then one for a few players. Do we try a new defensive playbook already? That's the question. Some things were good, like the pick were nice, I guess. The sacks overall were pretty good, but the, the players that should have had more should have had way more. I'm, I mean, I'm just talking about TJ Watt here. We'll see. But Patrick Mahomes wins MVP. Baker Mayfield now on the Falcons at number eight. That's something. Offensive player of the year also goes to Patrick Mahomes. Najee all the way down at nine. I thought he would be like top five. Defensive player of the year, of course, goes to division rival Miles Garrett. Alex Highsmith at number eight. It's like always TJ Watt, except for when I, except for when I use the stick. Steelers, of course. Xavier Leggett wins Offensive Rookie of the Year, of course, for the division rival Browns. Ricky Pearsall at number three. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Leadu Ladu for the Jags. Nate Wiggins at number four. So we will uh, hope that TJ Watt does better next year. But in the playoffs, we are going to be taking on the 10-7 and seven Las Vegas Raiders. Now, the Raiders are usually way better in this game than they should be in real life. So will we win this? Probably not. Do we, deser do we deserve to? Yes. But what should happen and what do happen are two different things in this game. <laughs> we have a hot opponent scenario though. We will go be confident, y'all know me. And we have a one last hurrah scenario. I'm guessing for Hayward. I don't really know who else it would be. We don't have Patrick Peterson anymore. I don't know if he's a good enough overall to get a one last hurrah. Yeah, it's Cam Hayward. So we get plus 10 morale. I mean, he probably won't retire anyways. I guess he could, but usually if you get a one last hurrah, they don't, they don't really retire for some reason. And we also have a first of many scenario. This is like the most scenarios I've ever gotten for a, a playoff game. We will go play it cool. Again, y'all know me. Unless you don't, then understandable. But let's simulate this game, and we'll see what happens. Okay, we surprisingly win. I was kind of expecting to get smoked, but we destroy the Raiders 27 to 10. We almost blow them out. I mean, we were only like four points off of that. And now we're going to be taking on the Jags, who do have the defensive rookie of the year. Trevor Lawrence looks like he did really well, if those are actually his stats, because sometimes it just lies. Okay, yeah, they are actually his stats. But now we have all the recaps, hot opponent. What do we even get for this? I don't remember. We get plus 10, all that kind of stuff. And 2,500 XP. Ooh, that's kind of nice. Recap for the one last hurrah. Should just be more morale. If it wants to load, we'll take it. And recap for the, the first of many. I just can't speak today. Seven staff points. Huge. I don't think I've ever manually spent a staff point in this game. <laughs> like, legitimately. I'm sure it would be good. I, I, I just don't know what to tell you. But let's simulate this game. If we lose this one, I mean, I don't know. It's only year one. Okay, that's fine. It's only year one. We we were a few overall better than them. And the Jags aren't like particularly good in this game, but it is what it is. Let's get into the offseason. And now let's work to really make this team good. It, it The overall might be worse starting next year because we are older still, but we'll see. Oh, and there's the classic Super Bowl. The Chiefs beat the Cowboys 38 to 14. Understandable. But now for re-signings. This is going to be interesting. We obviously still have some players here. Did we re-sign anyone? I think we re Resign Justin Fields, yeah, but that's that's it. So we'll resign Pat Fryermuth. Are we gonna have to go very player friendly? Uh, we'll try player friendly again. Five years, seventy nine mil. Okay, he takes it. Cool. Deontay Johnson. I we kind of do need him. We I don't want to have to get a different receiver, but he's already twenty nine and he's only an eighty three overall. He isn't that expensive though. That's the thing. Okay, because he isn't interested, we'll let him test and we'll see if there's a better receiver available. We have the fifth year for Kenny Pickett. We we are not gonna pick that up. We'll offer. For James Daniels, four years, 59 mil. He takes it. I've seen him do really well in Sims, so hopefully he can start playing like that for us. Cam Hayward. He was really good, honestly. We'll just do a one-year, $18 million deal. We have the cap. He takes it. I don't know if they will re-sign him in real life at this point. He might even retire, but he was still good, so we'll keep him. But everyone else here is pretty much a backup. I guess Mason Cole isn't, but he isn't very good. And I think we're going to work on a trade for Kenny Pickett. We'll see who had, I guess, an under 
better performance at QB and we'll trade him to that team. Oh, okay. Derek Carr was pretty, pretty terrible. Maybe the Saints are going to be an option here. Kenny Pickett's older than Justin Fields? That's interesting. I didn't know that. Oh, the Saints don't have, or well, no, the plan was a third round pick anyways. Okay, we'll trade Kenny Pickett to the Saints for a third round pick. Sounds good. Ooh, Najee Harris got X Factor. That's huge. Did we get any other dev ups? Did Nate Wiggins get Superstar? Did he have it? Okay, it looks like he just had it. That's huge too. Alex Highsmith got X Factor. Joey Porter Jr. got Superstar. I mean, if this defense can actually play as well as it is on paper or as good as it is on paper, we should be cooking, but will that happen? I don't think so. Well, we'll see. But in free agency, the, the top two players are both of the Browns guards. We don't really need a guard, but that's still good for us. The Browns lose a few players. And let's see, is there a better receiver we can go for? Not really. Deontay Johnson's kind of the best option. We could go for Jerry Judy. That would be interesting. You know what? We might do that. Still only 26 years old here with a star dev. I also want a center. Drew Dahlman? We could do that. Ooh, Greg Newsom. Let's steal another, or I guess not another Browns player, but they lose another player. We could steal him to be our slot. He's very cheap. Okay, again, not the, not the flashiest free agent class. There isn't anyone that's like an insane overall here, but three good players and three positions of need. So let's see if we can sign them. Okay, so we get Greg Newsom and Drew Dahlman. We don't get Jerry Judy yet though, but honestly, should we just see if there's a good receiver in the draft? We're probably gonna get tight in terms of cap space pretty soon. Jerry Judy isn't gonna develop like a whole ton. Yeah, we'll, we'll withdraw there. We'll look for a receiver in the draft. But speaking of, let's get to the draft and we'll have to see what we wanna do. Okay, well, we pick at 28. Unfortunately, there weren't like any good looking receivers receivers. I guess that doesn't matter anyways, because we wouldn't be able to take him. Uh, Gutierrez does look pretty good. I hope he's available. Ooh, he looks pretty nice. He's going to get taken like one pick before us. This feels like a classic unlucky rebuild so far. Let, let's see what happens. If he does, if I call that. Okay, no. Oh, and it was the Browns too. I would have, I would have stopped the video and taken a nap if that happened. Oh, he is still available though. Okay. Well, let's look at some of the receivers. We'll see if he is looking like the best one. Ooh, Justin Cheeks is not Cheeks. There are a lot of players named Cheeks in the draft, by the way. It's just set in layups for really not funny jokes. Ooh, Damian Richards looks really good too. I think he's definitely better than Cheeks. I don't know if he's better than Gutierrez though, because he's not a good route runner at all. I don't know. I'm not the best at picking receiver anyways. Asaya? As As is that supposed to be Isaiah? Asahaya? He looks all right. He actually looks pretty good, actually. <laughs> a playmaker with A spec catch, B medium route. He looks pretty damn good. I mean, I'm not going to take him here, obviously, but he might be an option for the third round, I guess. We'll see. But yeah, I think we're going to go with Justin Gutierrez here. We need a receiver. He can be, I guess, Brandon Cooks. He's from Oregon State. I think Brandon Cooks was also 21 years old coming out of Oregon State. There are definitely concerns like his short route and his catching, but everything else looks pretty good. So we'll take him. Normal dev, that makes sense. I figured he would be, but we'll see what his overall is. Well, no, it doesn't make sense. He should not, a player that athletic shouldn't have a normal dev trait, but I figured he would. Ooh, who's this? I mean, I doubt he's actually that good, but ooh, huge elite change of direction for a lineman. Let's go. No, his finesse isn't very good. And even his power isn't like crazy. It, it's at best a B. Okay, no, I'm good. Ooh, who's this? Derek Tillman? Force, uh, defensive tackles in Madden generated classes are way too fast. He ran a force. 73 a 468 at his pro day elite speed and agility nothing else elite surprisingly but a awareness play rec finesse moves tackle maybe even block shedding it's probably just a c but uh, i think we'll take him <laughs> he looks pretty insane salim stockton also looks good but he kind of just looks like a worse version of Derek tillman he's two younger or two years younger though tremont bushrod also looks decent but i think we'll go with Derek tillman out of ole miss sounds good okay he thankfully has hidden 87 Seven strength, 79 speed, 83 excel. That's crazy. I mean, I've seen crazier, but that's still crazy. We'll take it. And now with the pick we got from the Saints, what do we want to do here? What do we want to do here? Are there any good receivers left? I mean, we don't really need receiver at all, but I don't know. Hillhouse is still here. His combine wasn't like super great though. How about Alex Stevens? Ooh, okay. A, a bad route runner, but A catch in traffic, B spec catch, catching, release, A or B awareness. 
Again, no like great traits though, so he's probably gonna have normal. I don't know, you never know though. We really don't need him, <laughs> but <laughs> let me just make sure there's nothing I'm forgetting. That's actually a pretty big need. I mean, left tackle maybe, because Puny was terrible, but hopefully he'll get better. We definitely could go with a lineman, but eh, I like the receiver. We'll take him. Let's go with Alex Stevens out of Kansas State. He does have hidden 91 speed, 90 excel, not like the craziest ever, but pretty good for his, you know, catching ratings and all that. We'll take it. Okay, and last pick, let's go with, I don't know, there are a lot of good interior O linemen here. Do I like Chase McMillan? I don't know if I do. The more I look at him, I mean, he's good for sure, but there are also some other really good looking players. There's Everett Pryor. I like him. Really good strength, good agility, good jumping. Cool. A finesse for both run and uh, pass block. And then at center, there's Devin Logan, who looks really good. Honestly, he looks really good. Well, his power isn't as good as the other linemen, I don't think. And then Mark McDaniel also looks really good. Elite strength and agility. So I don't know who to go with here. I'm going to go with a guard because I think they're usually a higher overall. I think we'll go with Everett Pryor. I wish he had elite strength, but everything else looks good. Let's take him. 91 strength, hidden dev. We'll probably honestly go with another lineman, but let's get to the draft recap. We'll see how we did. Okay, this was uh, an interesting draft. I don't know if I'm disappointed by the overalls or not. Everyone's pretty much the overall I expect. We just didn't get anyone like insane. It felt like a pretty strong draft class though. Well, eh, no, I guess not. There was a really good QB though, Khalil Jackson. So apparently the Colts are giving up on Anthony Richardson. It looked like he did terribly though, so this this kind of makes sense. 96 throw power, 86 break sack. Whoa. Okay, this is this might be the craziest player I've ever seen. 99 speed at quarterback. I wish I saw his combine. Damn it. I mean, it was probably in the four twos. What the hell? <laughs> his acceleration isn't as good. I mean, it's a 94. It's really good, obviously, but 99 speed, 96 throw power. Yeah, this is the craziest player I've ever seen. I would. I would say. The Vikings also had the number one pick and picked 75 overall 23 year old pass rusher instead of maybe the best quarterback of all time. That's tough. But yeah, I mean, we did all right. Gutierrez is fine, just no dev trait. Derek Tillman was our best player, 76 overall. He does have hidden dev. We'll play him at defensive end. Is he gonna go up or down? Probably up, or he'll st stay the same, I don't know. Yeah, he stays the same, but that's fine. Alex Stevens is only a 72. I thought he I thought he would for sure be better than that. The playmaker was probably a better player then, but honestly, on paper, he looks pretty damn good. Just his route running sucks. Everett Pryor is a 75, and then I took Anton Wallace, a slot receiver. I focus scouted him. He was one I I was eyeing 93 speed and excel 85 catching and catch in traffic 77 short route which i think showed up as an a that's not like the best for an a but it's fine i mean he's as good as the receiver we took in the first round so i wish we did something else there but i don't know it's fine i also took cole ellis he isn't great but i didn't think he would be and then the cpu did did some things but let's get into year two and we will see how the team's looking okay here we are heading into year two now the offense is looking pretty different i mean new qb mostly new receiving core. At least the left side of our O-line is completely different. I would say we've definitely improved here. We're up to an 83 on offense. I don't know how an 83 and an 87 equals an 84, but that's fine. This defense is very, very good looking though. Great corner group, great D-line. Everything is great. I have no complaints. We can maybe use like a better linebacker, like a really good one, but we'll see. Honestly, Derek Forrest, that signing has worked out well. He's already an 80 overall, 82 with morale. Like we don't really even need to replace him. I was just thinking like, okay, he'll be good and then we'll replace him pretty soon, but that's worked out. He's he's done well and developed nicely. We still could definitely upgrade there, but I, I have other things to worry about, but I guess you never know. We'll see. But Justin Fields is playing up to an 82 now, or he's developed up to an 82. Hopefully he cannot throw 18 interceptions this year. I guess we'll see. So let's get to the midseason point. There's always a disappointing year that seems almost hard-coded into Madden, as I always say. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but we'll probably be two and five or something this year and we'll probably have one of the worst defenses in the league again although i don't know it was pretty good in the preseason we'll, we'll just see okay well we are four and three at the midseason still with one of the best offenses in the league and one of the worst defenses with an 83 overall offense and 80 and an 88 defense okay we're we're changing this defensive playbook do we just go full falcons i've heard the falcons defensive playbook is pretty good i feel like there's there's no defensive playbook that's consistent in this game but 
we'll try it. I've also liked the Rams when I've used it and the Cardinals. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll try this. Let me know if there's a good 3-4 uh, defensive playbook. 4-3-2. If you know of any good ones, I've just heard a lot that the Falcons is good. Anytime I've used it, I it's worked sometimes. I'll say that. So hopefully our defense will be better soon. We have some re-signings though. Uh, TJ Watt. See, I mean, I'm gonna re-sign him, but whenever I use him, I just, do I not know how to use him? Like, is there something I'm doing wrong? He's just always terrible when I use him. I don't know how I could use him wrong, but it's just so weird. I don't think I've ever had him do well, like, at all. But we'll offer him four years, 114 mil. He takes it. Najee Harris, five years, 62 and a half mil. He's not interested, though, but he doesn't take it. That's tough. George Pickens, four years, 56.4 mil. He takes it. Derek Forrest, I mean, he's interested, so sure. Three years, 27.3 mil. He takes it. Cam Hayward, I think, will resign at the end of the year, and then pretty much everyone else here is just a bunch of backups. But hopefully our defense can start doing better. I mean, if it did, this would be an insanely good team. But let's get to the end of this season and we will see what kind of record we end up with. Oh, do y'all do y'all see that symbol in the uh the ability slot too? Derek Tillman has X Factor. That's huge. But before I reveal how he did in year number two, if you've seen one of these videos before, y'all know why we're here. So if you haven't already, be sure to leave a like, be sure to subscribe. I would very much appreciate it. Trying to hit 50k by the end of the month and you know, if you've liked the video so far, this is pretty much what all my videos are like. So again, be sure to subscribe <laughs> and expect a ton of fun stuff coming soon. I know there's no football right now, but this is arguably when rebuilds get even better with all the drafts and, or well, draft picks and signings and all that kind of stuff. Whatever big moves happen, I'll probably do a rebuild of that team with the player. So it should be fun. Oh, and also yesterday I uploaded a second channel video. So be sure to go watch that after this. It's a super quick one. It's only like five minutes but link to the second channel in the description. You can be one of the first like 1500 subscribers if you want to. I also have another really fun one coming up, probably like Monday or something. We'll see. But in year number two, we finished nine and eight and we made the playoffs. We barely made the playoffs, but we at least made them. Our offense unfortunately got worse, but our defense did get better. That's good. Still wasn't as good as it should be, but it, it got better at least. Our pass game was really bad. We just, we don't pass that much, but our run game was was very good. So that's, that's just what happens, I guess. Justin Fields looks like he did well. Yeah, pretty good year. Only 3,300 yards, but 25 touchdowns, 10 picks. Not a great completion percentage. He honestly isn't very good in this game. So it's going to be a challenge to have him at QB and try to be good. But I mean, in terms of overall, he's up to a 70 or an 84. So I mean, on paper, this team's pretty good and he's pretty good, but almost 1,600 yard for, yards for Najee Harris, 5.1 per carry, 10 touchdowns. Justin Fields, 500 rushing yards, 4.8 per carry five touchdowns. We'll take it. Anton Wallace was actually our leading receiver. We've had weird leading receivers. I guess it's the slot guy. That makes sense, I guess. 955 yards, nine touchdowns. It's probably going to go, or offensive rookie of the year is probably going to go to the, the Colts QB. That would be my guess, or at least a QB, but hopefully Wallace can be up there. Maybe he can get a dev trait. I don't know. Outside of him though, really not much. The blocking, again, as, as little as we pass, the blocking has been very, very not great. I mean, that's not many total sacks allowed, but yeah, 34, like that isn't insane or anything, but like individual performances haven't been great. And then Patrick Queen, 124 tackles, 105 for Nate Wiggins, tackles for loss, 21 for Hayward, 20 for Highsmith, 16 for Watt, 15 for Benton, and sacks, 10 and a half for Cam Hayward, six and a half for TJ Watt. Am I do, do I not know how this game works? Do I not know what I'm doing? Like I, I have TJ Watt as a rush end. It's not like I have him at sub linebacker or something. What are, what a fucking terrible game. What a, what a shit game. <laughs> and he's normally like super dominant in simulation too. He'll win like every defensive rookie of the year award ever, except for when I use him. I don't know. That's tough. Interceptions. We had four total on the season, two for Minka and then one for Porter and Forrest. That's how the best overall defense in the league should play. MVP goes to Dak Prescott because of course it does. Offensive player of the year goes to Isaiah Pacheco. Najee at number 10. Defensive player of the year goes to Miles Garrett because of course it does. Offensive rookie of the year does go to Anton Anton Wallace. Khalil Jackson at number two, so he beat Khalil Jackson. Gutierrez at number six. Defensive rookie of the year goes to Warren Sharpton for the Titans. Hey, we'll, we'll take rookie of the year. No matter what happens here, they can't take that away from us. I mean, it wouldn't shock me if he just didn't get the upgrades. That would be a very Madden thing to happen, but we definitely have a good enough roster at this point, just certified EA moment. But let's simulate this game against the Bills, and we all know how this is gonna go. Yeah, we lose 10 to 7. Let's get
get into the off season. This is like the most Madden Madden rebuild of all time. <laughs> I'm feeling it. Oh, and we have a Super Bowl rematch. The 49ers actually win this one, 31 to 21 over the Chiefs. The 49ers are never really that good in simulation. Well, they can be. Just they they often disappoint, as most good teams do in this game. I mean, we have the Cowboys win the Super Bowl damn near every year. But the 49ers win it here. Some great players here, some 50 overall guys. But Antoine Anton Wallace, I keep wanting to call him Antoine because he has a W in his last name, but he gets an upgrade, and I would hope Star Dev. Wearing number 82, that's something. I just noticed that. But he gets plus three catch in traffic, plus two medium route, and we are going to be giving him Star Dev. Cool. Ooh, Stevens has Superstar. That's interesting. I don't know how much that's gonna matter, but that's kind of cool. Unfortunately, Cam Hayward did retire, but the, we pretty much already have his replacement in Derek Tillman with x Fact. But let's get to the re-sign period, and who do we want to bring back? We, we definitely want Najee. He doesn't want us, but we want him back. Five years, 80 mil, sure. He takes it. I wish players, here's the thing. I wish players would tell you what kind of contract they want. You know what I mean? So they don't, like you just send them an offer and they reject it. I wish they could like come back with what kind of money they want and you either like choose to accept it or reject it. I don't know. I, I wish that was a thing. That would be kind of cool. We'll pick up the fifth year for Broderick Jones though. He isn't interested. So we'll <laughs> we'll have to see if we can re-sign him next year. But everyone else, I think we're good. Should we bring, I guess we'll bring Connor Hayward back. I mean, Cam Hayward retired, but he isn't very expensive anyways. Okay, I guess not. Never mind. Now that his brother's gone, he's just, he's done. Or is he his cousin? I don't know. Something. And in free agency, it's again a lot of, a lot of older players that I don't think I'm super interested in. I do want a left tackle. Bernard Ryman, we could maybe go for him. How does he do in simulation? Is he good? I don't even know if I've had him. Oh, he's not, not fantastic. Okay, I don't know if I want to do that. Trent Brown's pretty good in this game, from what I remember. Just kidding. <laughs> Ronnie Stanley's good, but I get him so often. I, I don't want to do that. Is there a good receiver? Uh, no. At least not like a number one guy. I'm honestly not super interested in like anyone here. Really what we need is like a super good receiver and that's about it on offense and a good left tackle. There are some good ones, but they don't play well. We could just go for Ryman just so we can do something here and hope that he does well. Okay, I don't know if we need to go player friendly. I guess we could also get Juwan Bentley if we want to. I don't know how much I want to, but we could. And uh, I want to I wanna make a trade. That's what we'll do. But let's see if we can sign Ryman. He is in interested and it looks like he does sign. And now let's work on a trade. All right, we're going to trade a first round pick for Devontae Smith, who's a 92 overall here. He's very good. In real life, would I trade a first round pick for him? I mean, maybe. Marquise Brown went for a first round pick, so I maybe? I guess it depends. But here he's definitely worth it at a 92 with Superstar. I know we're not in like super pass heavy offense though, like probably the least pass heavy or one of the least pass heavy, but I'll start Devontae Smith in the slot. We'll try to get him like a million catches. We'll see how that goes. And plus, I just want this team to be better on paper. So why not? But let's get to the draft and we'll see what we can do. We definitely have a, a few needs on defense. Oh, this looks like a great linebacker class. Is there a single draftable one? <laughs> this might be the single worst position group I have ever seen. Oh, there's one draftable guy, Trayvon Edwards. <laughs> That's not a great class, not a great class. But in the draft, we of course don't pick until the second round, almost the end of the second round. The Jets have the number one pick. They go with a defensive end. Something interesting is it seems like teams always go with a defensive end or just a, a pass rusher in general at number one, no matter how bad they need quarterback. Now, I don't know if they necessarily need quarterback here, but it's it's interesting. I uh, <laughs> really was there a good quarterback available? Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, nobody projected to go top five, but still Adam Hayes looks pretty good. What does he look like? Elite throw power, elite strength. His throw on the run isn't great, but everything else looks pretty good. I don't know. Teams always have interesting strategies in the draft. With our first pick though, I don't know what I want to do. I mean, like I, like y'all saw the, the linebacker class is very weak. There were some good looking outside linebackers, but are they actually good? Harold Collins looks all right. His block shed isn't very good, but everything else is. He might actually be pretty decent. Marlon Woodyard also looks pretty good. Okay, these guys actually look decent. There was one more. Mitch Barclay looks really good too. He's fast or well, pretty fast. KJ Middleton looks good. I don't know who's the best. Middleton might be the best out of these guys. Elite speed and acceleration, A play rec, A hit power, A tackle, A block shed. I kind of like him. I mean, his coverage ability is definitely uh, in question, but he's fast and a good run defender. But honestly, I don't need to take him yet. We'll take him later. I kind of like Christian Johnson. We really don't need a corner though, but like, what do we even need? I guess we do need a, a D lineman, huh? We might do that. What does Robbie Gary look like?
Gehrig, or Bobby Gary. He looks good. I mean, defensive linemen are always disappointing overalls. He's probably like a 72, but he looks pretty good. Miles Barton looks good. I wish I knew what his block shedding was. Skylar Dahl looks good. Pretty good. Deontay Parrish looks good. Arthur Floyd, not, not great. I don't know. There aren't great players at our positions of need. We might go Barton, but I'm not even sure because he doesn't have anything that's an A. I mean, he might have A finesse moves, but he's listed as a power rusher and his B, uh, B power rush, so his finesse moves is not an A. He looks all right. We'll take him. Hidden Dev, 91 strength. Sure, why not? And now let's go with one of the linebackers. This will probably be the last pick I show. Or no, I'll probably show two linebacker picks. For the first one, do I like Collins or Woodyard more? Woodyard is a year younger. Let me see. They both have the same pursuit as far as I know. They look really similar. Woodyard just has slightly better block shedding. Collins looks a little stronger though. I think we'll still go with Woodyard. Oh yeah, Woodyard has elite speed. Collins only is good. Okay, yeah, Marlon Woodyard, welcome to the team. Hidden Dev, 87 speed, 88 excel. Cool. Ah, and the run stopper linebacker is gone. That sucks. All right, well, I'll make a couple more picks and I will see y'all for the draft recap. Ooh, okay, this was a really bad draft. Uh, <laughs> Miles Barton is only a 70 overall. I was block shedding is very bad. Okay, that one wasn't great. Woodyard is decent, 73. Neil is okay, 71. Yeah, that, that first pick definitely wasn't great. Although to be fair, at least it wasn't as bad as this pick. That's that's something. I mean, hey, we, we got what we needed, so it's fine. Let's get into year three. But here's a look at the team heading into the season. We're looking really good at an 88 overall. Now our offense is as good as our defense. We're an 88 across the board. Hopefully the team can play as well as it actually is. Did I already say that? I've never phrased something that weird before, but I've done it twice in this video. Hopefully the team can play as good as it actually looks on paper. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and you know what? To be petty when we underperform this year. Let me see where we rank in, in terms of team overall at an 88. I doubt we're like the best, but we, we actually might be. The Dolphins have an 88, so we're tied for the best. The Chiefs are only an 84. That's tough. So we are tied for the best roster in the league. The Steelers are a pretty fun team to rebuild. I mean, they have a few flaws, but if you can fix those, this team becomes kind of crazy. But let's again get to the midseason point and we will see how we're doing. Can't wait to be three and four or two and five or something. Ah, uh, yeah, that was a pretty good guess. We're three and three at the midseason. Just one less game than I expected and we're almost for sure gonna lose this game against the Colts. We also got, <laughs> oh, the Panthers are set. The Panthers and Commanders are seven and oh. This game's great. We also got absolutely blasted by the Titans in week one. <laughs> so that was great. And by the Commanders. We destroyed the, the Saints. Can we play a normal game, please? Four of our six games have been at least double digits. Either wins or losses. I guess the last two have been closer, but God, this is a, this must be a terrible team to watch. They either destroy the other team or get destroyed. Why did I leave middle linebackers as our, <laughs> as our scout? Whatever. I don't know what I'm doing. We again have some re-signings. Anyone important? Minka, Joey Porter. Oh, of course, literally nobody's interested. Joey Porter doesn't want to re-sign with the team that his dad played for. That's cool. Thanks, EA. And it's literally in state. Why the hell would he not be interested? I, I love this game. Let's start with Minka. Six years, 150 mil. Damn, he takes it. Five years, 80 mil for Joey Porter Jr. He also takes it. Now we have 1.7 mil in cap space left. I mean, at least we don't have too many more players to re-sign, and I think we can... Why do we have two kickers? I think we can get out of some deals, but we'll see. Not get out of some deals, but... Well, maybe, but I meant restructure at the end of the year. So let's get to the end of the season, and we'll see what happens. Okay, we surprisingly do make the playoffs finishing 10 and 7. Our defense is still not great. It's worse than it finished last year, but I guess it could be worse. We are a 91 overall, though. This team is ridiculous. You know what I'm realizing I forgot to do? Oh, okay, good. It still put <laughs> Devontae Smith as the slot receiver. I don't know. Maybe it's good that I didn't change these. Maybe this layout will make these Alex Highsmith and TJ Watt play better. We'll see. I mean, that's pretty much the layout I had to begin with. I don't know. May <laughs> we'll see. Justin Fields was very good this year. Okay, 3,400 yards, 31 touchdowns, 12 picks. Again, the picks are a touch high, but like, I'm not gonna complain at this point. 69% completion percentage, nice. Over 1,550 yards for Najee Harris, 5.3 per carry, 11 touchdowns. 500 rushing yards for Fields, five touchdowns. Devontae Smith, five yards away from 1,000, eight touchdowns. Again, not much outside of him. The blocking was better this year, for sure, much better. We had a lot of tackles on defense, 122 for Patrick Queen, tackles for loss. Uh, 13 for Alex Highsmith and sacks. Okay, maybe we need to go back to the Steelers playbook because 11 and a half for TJ Watt, which is cool, but that's that's it. And that's not even nearly as good as TJ Watt.
Watt is in real life, obviously. Four for Derek Tillman, three and a half for Alex Highsmith. All right, understandable. <laughs> Five picks for Minka, two or three for Patrick Queen, two for Woodyard, and one for Wiggins. Woodyard was very good, by the way. Hopefully defensive rookie of the year, we'll see. I mean, 113 tackles, six for loss, a sack and a half, two picks, and 11 pass deflections, also a forced fumble. He was good. We'll probably get cucked by a Browns player or something. But MVP goes to Dak again. Huh. Najee at number nine, defensive player of the year. You'll never guess who it is. Miles Garrett for the third year in a row. Adam Haynes wins offensive rookie of the year for the Patriots. Wade at number eight. I don't even know who Wade is. I'm going to be honest. And defensive rookie of the year does go to Marlon Woodyard, thankfully. He's probably not even going to get a dev trait for it, but if he doesn't, I'll just give him one. I don't care. I'm sick of the game at this point. <laughs> Let's see if we had any good dev traits, though. I would guess they're all just probably star, but we'll see. Okay, so Wade is the running back. That's what I was thinking. I knew he had a rookie. I thought about playing him. I forgot though. Barton doesn't have his dev trait revealed, unfortunately. Woodyard is only star, but at least he got defensive rookie of the year, so that'll be superstar. We will take it, and we are going to be taking on the 10 and 7, but only 84 overall Jacksonville Jaguars. We literally have 7 overall on them, so it's going to be a catastrophic loss. We have a hot opponent scenario, though. <laughs> I feel like this rebuild has shaved years off my life. We'll go be confident. Would y'all blame me if I made this the last year of the rebuild? <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna get a better roster than we have at this point. We'll just say I built the best roster in the league and that's all I can do. We'll pretend we won the Super Bowl. Should I do that or would that be lame? I mean, I guess I can go another year, but let's see if we somehow can beat the Jags. <laughs> we are 91 overall offense. Can't score a single point against the Jags. Yeah, for my safety, for my well-being, I might have to end the rebuild there. This has become a ridiculously good team, though. There isn't really much else we can feasibly upgrade at this point. I mean, I guess there is, but, like, we have a good player, at least a good player, at literally every position. This is one of the better realistic rebuild teams I've built, and it's only in year three. I don't think it's gonna get better, though, because cap is becoming a problem, and I don't know. <laughs> but this has been, this has certainly been a rebuild. If we're going off this, maybe the Steelers shouldn't get Justin Fields. I wouldn't mind if they did it in real life depending on the price. I guess it equals wins, but not, not much playoff success, to say the least. But thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Normally, I do longer rebuilds than this. I just don't know if this one was going anywhere. But thank you all so much for watching, and with that, I will see y'all again in the next video. Oh, also, feel free to watch the video on the second channel I uploaded yesterday. Link in the description, but goodbye.